loro sono in così Good evening, uh, such a great chance and then I, I, I present uh, uh, my work in front of my, my masters and my teachers, Dr. Ablaiz, Dr. Hena Ablaiz, Dr. Ahmed Morro, Dr. Ahmed Thank you very much for this chance. Uh, this piece of work has been done in uh, Cairo University Hospital, uh, uh, all breastfed technique and arthroscopic ACR reconstruction. Uh, the senior author of, uh, of this paper uh, is Professor Dr. Ablaiz Tengirki uh, and uh, with the uh, collaboration with the work of Dr. Mufur Abdelkadim, Dr. Ahmed Riz and Dr. Ayman uh, First, uh, I'd like to give an overview about uh, the topic. The rupture of the ACL is considered one of the most common ligamentous knee injury. Uh, in the human knee joint and AC error construction as a procedure counts to the most common knee joint operations. Uh, many factors, as we all know, influence the outcome and the success of this procedure, um, such, like, uh, such as physiological band tension, sufficient mechanical stability of fixation, and infringement free range of motion. But why do we need implant free reconstruction procedures? We all know that a lot of uh, fixation techniques have been described all over the years to fix the ACL graft in its tunnels. But why there is an urge and a need to develop a technique without implants? There is a lot of uh, drawbacks uh, uh, concerned or related to the current formal ACL reconstruction techniques, and that's why we resort to an implant-free reconstruction procedure. First, it is expensive. Second, difficulty in hardware removal, and this is most seen with the revision cases. Hardware migration, difficulty in revision, fixation away from the surface, graft laceration and tear, especially when we introduce our screws, graft elongation and the well-known bungee effect, and bone panel dilatation, always seen in revision cases, or most seen in revision cases. So this concept has been developed. Our concept is to fix our graft inside the tunnel using bone plugs using bone plugs uh, harvested from the tunnel or from the proximal media mm -hmm. uh, uh, and fixing an, an, an undersized tunnel with an oversized bone plug us using a, a, a surgical diamond drill instead of the normal drill bits that uh, commonly have, have been used in order to drill our tunnels. Uh, I thought when uh, Dr. Abdelaziz uh, first assigned me to do this, uh, to, to do this uh, thesis, I first thought it is a new idea and a new concept. Uh, but when I got back to the literature, uh, I found that it's an, uh, a concept that has started uh, since the 1980s, uh, and it was described with using the bone propeller tendon bone first, and then it was, uh, th there is evolution in this procedure, and they started using it with quadricep ten uh, tendon uh, by Darwin et al. in 1996, and in 2003, the concept of using the hamstring tendon and uh, doing it a press fit reconstruction procedure has been developed and described by Paisner in Germany, Masteropoulos, and Gui in China, and Fenlis, of course, in Germany. Our study, uh, the aim of our study is to evaluate this technique, the all press fit technique in arthroscopic ACA reconstruction using a quadruple hamstring tendon graft. Uh, we, uh, our study included 50 patients and uh, the follow-up period was three months, from three months to three years and five months, and we evaluated our patients subjectively, objectively, and instrumentally. Our technique usually starts with a diagnostic arthroscopy. We proceed into tendon harvesting. Sorry, this this is the, the quadruple hamstring that we harvest, and then we uh, uh, harvest the tibial bone plug first from the proximal tibia, around two to three and a half centimeters uh, below the articular margin. And this is our bone plug. It uh, this is uh, usually uh, slightly longer than what we need. We need only 1.52 centimeter bone plug. And then we start to prepare our graft. This is the way that we prepare our graft. For example, we do a, a tunnel. Uh, we have a graft, the quadruple tendon hamstring graft, 8 millimeter in diameter. Then we harvest a, a 10 millimeter bone plug and we put it in the distal end. We incorporate it in the distal end of our graft. And then we proceed into uh, drilling our femoral tunnel like this and we make sure that we do not we do not have a posterior blowout and here is the, the femoral the bone cylinder uh, harvested out of the femoral tunnel and then we pr proceed into the harvesting the bone plug out of the tibial tunnel and then we pass our graft from bottom to top like the video that is shown here this is a, simpl a simplified video we drill our tibial tunnel and we harvest the, the bone plug out of the tibial tunnel and then we uh, and we drill our femoral tunnel as well and then we pass our graft from distal to proximal 
and then we hammer it from that, uh, from uh, uh, from below in order to achieve this press filtration, and then we uh, cut our bone plugs into two pieces uh, and insert it back into the femoral tunnel, achieving this uh, press fixation. We evaluated our patients as I said, subjectively, objectively, and instrumentally. The subjective assessment include the level of activity, the rating of the knee function by the patient itself, the difficulty in doing some set of activities, and casual lashing knee scoring. Uh, our result uh, concluded that 4% uh, of uh, only of our patients before operation they could do strenuous or very strenuous activities, while uh, we have 80% of our patients uh, was were able to uh, to do a strenuous or very strenuous activities postoperatively. Uh, all patients reported improvement in the subjective functional ratings of their knee from pre to post operatively and uh, the, the subject uh, and rating the asking the, the patient about some certain activities like going upstairs kneeling in front of the knee and squatting and jumping and landing on the involved knee you can see that there is no patient uh, none of our patients find any of these activities difficult or extremely difficult and we, we can say that 90 percent of our patients found the daily activities easy with no or minimal difficulty after the operation this is the tessional lash and knee scoring pre and post operative the pre operative is the red line and the blue uh, and the post operative is the blue line we can see that there is improvement in all the uh, in all of our patients from pre to post operatively we have we had a 62 mean range pre-operatively and a 92.6 mean post-operatively. Summing up all the subjective assessments, we can say that 90% had normal or nearly normal results according to the International Knee Documentation uh, Committee scoring system. We uh, proceed into the objective assessment, uh, assessing the effusion, range of motion, lacrimal and pivot, and anterior drawer. Uh, here are uh, the results of, of our objective assessment. We can say that in uh, our results regarding lacrimal testing, uh, with, we find that most, more than 40% of our patients had less than 2 mm tibial translation. And comparing this to the former studies the, using the, the apresthetic concept as well, we, we, we found our results be, uh, slightly below uh, the results. On the other hand, on the pivot shift, we found our results comparable with 97% of our patients equal pivot shift on both sides or just a glide, which uh, stands for normal or nearly normal results. Evaluation, we use this uh, digital uh, form of Raleigh meter and uh, KT1000 in order to assess our patients. And we find that our results use, uh, all, uh, also conforms with the previous results. We had a mean difference of 1.3 millimeters different side to side difference uh, on KT1000 and a 1.6 mean difference, side to side difference on Raleigh meter. We, uh, I'll present one case, uh, uh, one case. Uh, this is a patient 29 years old and I'm sorry to say his name, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he only could do some light activities preoperatively. He rated his knee function to be 2 preoperatively and he, uh, the Fajner Russian knee scoring was 47 preoperatively. Uh, he had a bucket hand and hair medial meniscus and this is the anti-notch. We can see that this anti-notch time uh, indicating ETL injury and we, uh, we ring our femoral tunnel and this is the bone plug out of the femoral tunnel before extracting it. Uh, here we can measure the femoral tunnel, make sure that there is enough posterior wall and make sure that we have a 30 millimeter uh, length of the femoral tunnel before inserting across our graft. This is our graft dust and this is our bone plug in the femoral tunnel fixing the graft that has passed and we can here uh, test the tension post, uh, uh, post passage of the graft in order to uh, make sure that our tension is okay. Here, there is a, this is a schematic diagram showing the, uh, our arrangement of the double bundling that, that, that happens in the femoral tunnel after we fix our graft. Uh, our graft, uh, it flattens and forms a crescentic uh, semi-lunar shape uh, in uh, and it, it, it simulates or mimics the normal native arrangement of the ACL inside the femoral tunnel. Most operatively, he improved and he could do moderate activities like uh, moderate physical work, running or jogging without significant pain or swelling or giving way. He needed his knee function to become 8, it was 2, and his post optimal vaginal lush knee scoring was 95. Now, effusion status, according to the IKEC, they all showed uh, uh, normal or excellent results. KT 1000 side to side difference was zero. It was equal to KT, uh, KT 1000 side to side difference, and the digital or meter side to side difference is only 0.6 millimeters. Complications of our procedure uh, that we had in our 50 patients: there was uh, premature graft amputation in three cases, poor quality bone plugs, 
posterior blowout, which is the major complication that we have in our procedure, and uh, these five cases were in the early learning cur curve. We had a uh, post-operative uh, lack of flexion, three patients that two patients have improved, and one, only one patient had a uh, lack of flexion, and two uh, patients had a lack of extension, and DBT, one patient, gross instability postpartum, one patient, and, th and this was the rescheduling for a second surgery, but uh, he, lost, he was lost in the follow -up. Other uh, form of complication that has been mentioned in the lecture, but we did not encounter any of these complications like bone tunnel dilatation, infection, tibial plateau blowout, and uh, the, the, uh, that haven't been met with any of our patients. Advantage to some of the, we can see that the advantage of this concept of ACL precipitate reconstruction, first it's a biological concept with no use of any foreign implants or materials. It is an economic and a cost effective method. It's a near, we, have, we, we aim at achieving a near to surface rotation, avoiding the bungee effect or the, or the windshield effect. No bone defects post reconstruction, which stands for a better rehabilitation and faster recovery. Easy revision, and we can use a single stage post operative. And bone to bone healing, which is uh, theoretically and, and practically it is better and faster graft integration, and, and, and of course a better functional outcome. And it is an MRI friendly with avoiding common dilatation post operative. Conclusion, all precise technique can be used safely and successfully in ATL surgery and it presents a good alternative for, among other options for ATL reconstruction, further biomechanical and clinical study, especially comparative study are needed to better evaluate this technique. And I will, uh, I will uh, end with this quote from Fu et al. in 2000 that he said that the ideal method for graft fixation should be anatomical, biocompatible, safe, reproducible, allows undisturbed post-surgical MRI and does not complicate possible revision surgery and all of these criteria have been met in our procedure in the arthroscopic press fit ACA reconstruction and that's why that we uh, recommend this technique. Thank you very much.